If you had to choose any gun from fiction, which one would you have? Uh, the Needler. Pew, pew. So good. The Lancer from the Gears of War series is, in its simplest sense, a fuck-off machine gun with a chainsaw strapped to it. Unsurprisingly, the extended universe of the Gears of War franchise has established that the Lancer is insanely dangerous. What you might not expect, though, is that it's dangerous to the person using it. Okay, first things first. Extended Gears of War universe is a thing. Yeah, yeah, there's loads of novels and all sorts. Like, the series is really, really popular, and obviously there's like, there's like spin-off games, there's a lot of novels which we'll be obviously mostly referencing today because they go into like, you know the background of like you know the locust invasion. Like, you didn't you didn't play Gears of War, did you? I saw you immediately your eyes glazed over. I played a lot of Gears of War, so I'm interested in it. So let's just say there's a lot of novels. Like, I think with Halo, similar thing, and Mass Effect. I've got a friend who really likes the Mass Effect novels, but I just like the games because I just like you know being renegade femme chef and just punching people out. It's great. <laughs> God, those games are so good. Like, do you remember when games were good? Do you remember when games weren't just Let's take away half the content in them and then yeah. charge you for them afterwards. So, do you remember just like, just like the, the joy of getting like Halo 3 <laughs> and just punching people? I can't believe that there is a literal casino in a game now. Like, no, no, it's not gambling. It's not. No, have you not no, seen no, all the no. people saying it's not gambling? But it is gambling. Even though it's banned in 50 countries where gambling is illegal. But it's not gambling. The comparison that often gets used is in our loot box and stuff. They're like Kinder Eggs, it's a surprise. I think EA even said it's a surprise, surprise mechanic. Mechanic. Right, And I say no, because a Kinder Egg, you get a physical object you can hold, you can put on your car dashboard, you put on your office. If Kinder Eggs were like loot boxes, you would get inside a code that you entered and they'd email you a picture of the thing you want. <laughs> that is how that, and then after like six or so years, they delete that photo so you couldn't see it anymore. <laughs> Yeah, there's only two th games I think I've paid for microtransactions in. Pokemon Go, which I don't play anymore. I must have So bought... that means that was wasted money. Yeah, How much I, did you spend? I, I, at least 100 So I you think. spent £100. You could have got 40 games for the PS2. You could have bought I could have Total bought, Overdose. I could have bought an old console and a Pokemon game and caught all the Pokemon from yeah. Google. Um, the other one is Fortnite, which obviously is eventually going to die a death. <sighs> And I'm going to have not like... Once that game dies, and obviously no one else plays it anymore, that's, that money's all gone down the drain as well. This I is, know you're not actually doing anything on that phone. Th it's recording. This is my favourite bit we've ever done. Of every time you talk about Fortnite, I just look wistfully into the distance and get my phone. I thought it was Legacy of Kane you did that just for. Any, I do it with all things. So how come when I talk about something I like, because you, you, you just zone out. When you talk thing. about something you like, like Gears of War that I've not played, I have to sit here and listen and read back questions for you so you can talk about Gears of War. So I make the conversation interesting. <laughs> But yes, there is an extended universe around the Gears of War franchise, which establishes that the Lancer Mark II, the machine gun with a fucking chainsaw on it, is a weapon that was conceived on the battlefield, specifically when the closest thing the series has to a protagonist, Marcus Phoenix, um, was engaging in a brutal like hand-to-hand -hand fight with a locust and a large fridge-shaped gentleman called, 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 called Ty Kelso picked up a nearby power saw and cut the locust in half. Is it weird that the guy who does the voice of Marcus Phoenix is like Jake the dog and Bender? I just wanted to bring it up because it's really weird to me. Does he use the same voice for it? It's similar. You can tell it's the same guy who does the voice. Yeah, it's, it's just the same guy who does the voice for Bender. It's just Marcus Phoenix. And it really cracks me up. Sounds like shit got thick for you. Shut up, baby, I know it. So just to backtrack slightly. Yeah. So this chainsaw gun, mm -hmm came about because someone used a chainsaw and said it... This... On a battlefield, yeah. yes. And the story goes that uh, Marcus Phoenix then took this idea to his superior and said, well, the Lancer Mark I, we well, wasn't called the Mark I, but it's called the Lancer, has this really shitty bayonet that can barely penetrate the hide of a locust. Um, maybe consider putting a chainsaw on the bottom. And this was an idea that was, of course, immediately accepted because it's so fucking awesome. And they put the chainsaw on the gun. Yeah. That sounds about right. Holy shit! And I believe that's how they sold the first Gears of War, where well, they just said, oh, you've got a gun, but it's also got a chainsaw on it. <laughs> and for a moment, let's just appreciate awesome, cool guns from fiction, because something I have always, always disliked is when I play a game that's set in the future or the near future, and they don't just put in crazy wacky laser guns because 
One of the reasons I love Halo is because they said, fuck it, we fight aliens, give them alien guns. And they've got like, the plasma rifle, the needler, which bounces off of walls and everything, it, like super combines. Yeah, I, I love it when video games give you a gun that's just like... In, just interesting. Yeah. Well, that's more interesting than just fire in a straight line. And I appreciate when game designers have a bit of fun with the weapons that they put into like, you know, first person and third person shooters. So we don't just have to have just like machine gun, shotgun, and sniper rifle, which Gears of War does contain, but that basic machine gun does have a fucking chainsaw on it. Plus, well, it has the torque bow, which is probably one of my favorite weapons ever because it's just a bow and arrow. We have to charge it up, and if you charge it up enough, it'll stick in your opponent and kill them instantly, or you can like go through their head and kill some behind them. But you can always do my effect, which is the flaccid torque bow kill, where you just charge it up the tiny sound, it goes, Puh, lands, <laughs> lands on the floor, and then gun butt an opponent into it, so they go back, take a bit of damage from the gun butt, and then just fall to pieces. <laughs> and the, the reason I bring this up is because interesting weapons in a shooter can elevate what would otherwise be a mediocre game. Like, look at Resistance, like Fall of Man. Not a great game by any means, That's but some cool guns. the fact you get all the cool, weird alien guns yeah. means that at the very least, it's fun to fucking play because you get to see all these cool, like, interesting weapons interacting with the environment in various ways. And then compare that to something like Haze, which to my knowledge was a generic first person shooter. Haze. Just put more cool weapons in games, folks. That's all I want. I just don't want to rely... Even though I know in the multiplayer I'm going to be like, beelining for the shotgun and the sniper rifle, at least in the campaign, give me the option to just super combine a grunt so they fly off the edge with, like, purple needles shooting at their asshole. So the Lancer, this Gears of War Lancer... Yes. ...is... I mean, it sounds like a pretty decent weapon Oh, it to fucking... Have. It really, really is, because in the game, it's a one-hit kill against most every human-sized opponent in the game. However, the supplementary material for the universe, which expands upon the Lancer, says that um, you probably shouldn't do it for that. And apparently in the official guidebook that like, you know, COG soldiers get given for the Lancer, it says, do not use this in combat. It is a very bad idea. It is a tool to be used on the battlefield to like, you know, get through barricades and that sort of thing. Obviously, every soldier ignores this because it's a fucking chainsaw on a gun. And you're probably thinking, people at home and you, Brad, like, why? would they put this thing onto a gun and then tell people not to use it? Particularly because the first guy who suggested it saw it being used. Yeah, and it was incredibly effective. It was more effective than like, you know, the, like the actual gun he had in his hand. And the answer comes in a novel called Gears of War Asphalt Fields, where it establishes that the Lancer chainsaw spins at such a high RPM that when you are cutting through the tough exterior of a locust, bone fragments will be flung from the enemy you are attacking with such high speed that they will fly into your eyes and blind you. But if you're going to be using it to cut apart barricades and things anyway, you're going to have the same fucking problem. You are. It doesn't spin any slower if you're using it against something that's not an alien. But obviously if you're using it to cut a barricade, you'll be like, obviously you'll have time to do that and you'll be like, right, no, take care. The thing is though, in the games, you are not told this is a last ditch life or death weapon you should use in the absolute most dire of circumstances. You're told, no, fuck it, this is your standard arsenal. Chainsaw everything. And I'll tell you what, I do. I, I, in Gears of War multiplayer, I only chainsaw. I only, ch I am that guy who hides around corners and then just like waits for someone to run up and just chainsaw them. Because you know what? That shit's the best. And obviously, Extended Universe material acknowledges that a lot of soldiers ignore this warning and that, like, you know, brass in the cog says, well, if you're going to do this, at the very least, wear your helmet or something to protect your eyes, which is the funniest part to me because it makes every single main character look like a fucking idiot because none of them wear helmets. In fact, there is a joke in that series where the character who wears a helmet always dies first. <laughs> and as if that wasn't bad enough, they're all related. <laughs> because in the first game, you have Anthony Carmine who gets headshot by a sniper. sniper. In the next game, you have his brother, Benjamin Carmine, who falls into like, you know, the guts of a giant monster that gets eaten. <laughs> So, do all of his brothers die? The only one who doesn't is Clayton Carmine in Gears of War 3, who 
they put in as a joke because he is like the big brother of both Carmine. Like, he is Daddy Carmine. And they have multiple like situations where he looks like he's going to die as a nod to the previous two. And he, and he always comes back. And in the very last fight you have, like he's in a helicopter, that crashes and explodes. And he comes out with a minigun. <laughs> the cavalry has arrived! Take that, you bitch! And the reason I love this is because you're probably thinking, why is he called Carmine? And that's because that's the exact shade of red that the red shirts wore in Star Trek. <laughs> so obviously they die first. They're red shirts. They're literal red shirts. <laughs> and as well, Anthony Carmine, Benjamin Carmine, Clayton Carmine, ABC. But it gets better because say for the Carmines, there is only one character in the mainline series who wears goggles, and that is a character called Baird, who wears them on his head to keep his hair out of his eyes instead of preventing like bone shrapnel from blinding him. And you know what? I respect that, because that guy does have some fucking good hair. You've not played Gears of War, have you? No. But I think you should for the Carmine family, because in the first Gears of War, like Anthony Carmine is obviously a, like an afterthought. He's a side character who dies in the first mission. And obviously the developers didn't think, oh, no one's going to get attached to this character. People fucking did. And they started a backstory for him. And I think people keep vandalising the Gears wiki to say, oh, yeah, he's the character in gaming with the most expansive just world building around him. <laughs> and he's like this unkillable god creature because he always comes back, no matter how many times he's killed, under the mantle of his brother. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, is that the law? And in multiplayer, I only ever play as Carmine because he's supposed to be a rookie. Like, him and Benjamin are rookies, and his brother Clay is like the fucking big dick daddy. And Anthony and Benjamin are both just so scared of everything, which is why they say, oh, you're mine now, bitch, when they grab people. <laughs> and whenever you play them, get headshots, they just scream constantly, because they're so excited to not be dead. <sighs> oh, man, but before we move on, I need to talk about, though, my friend Tom's mortal enemy in Gears of War, and that is Min. Because in Gears of War 1 multiplayer, we used to play against bots all the time because we didn't have online. And me and him would team up against the bots, and whenever we played against fucking Min, for some reason, this character would seek out my friend and just curb stomp him every single time. And my friend became convinced that this character, specifically this one bot, was after him after he saw him come up and just like do a couple of circles and chainsaw him when he was down on the floor dying. So he used to go into matches against him and just go into like one-on-one -on -one sniper fights against the novice AI to headshot him. <laughs> <laughs> because he said he's got a big bald head so it's so easy to snipe. And I'll never forget him when I just saw him once in multiplayer doing it. He goes, oh yeah, Min, that big bald head don't protect you from this. And he lined up the sniper shot and he was looking at him through a scope, but talking to himself, like, oh, I'm going to fuck him up. And then the character model stood up and sniped him back. And my friend just went, he was a novice AI. A novice AI should not be able to quick scope someone that. And he went, he heard me. He said his Xbox Live headset because he was talking to someone else via Xbox Live. The, the programmed in the response. So he said it heard him and he became, and from that moment on he was scared of Min. <laughs> and he used to always play as fucking the Locust and if he saw Min on the other team he'd run away. <laughs> <sighs>